friends and welcome back to my channel. Happy freaking Valentine's Day everybody. I hope you are all having a fantastic day. Love should be in the air. I hope it is. I hope you have some sort of love coming your way today because you absolutely deserve it. If not from anybody else, from me sending the love right at you <laughs> in the form of plants. <laughs> so last year for Valentine's Day I did a special collection tour of all of my heart shaped leaf plants, all of the best ones that I have in my collection. So if you want to go check that out, get some inspiration for heart leaf plants, go ahead. This year I wanted to do something slightly different. I wanted to go through all of the pink and purple plants in my collection because I feel like I got a good little mix of pink and purple plants. And I was gonna wear pink, but I don't have any pink to wear. So we're going purple, full purple. <laughs> this will have to do. My face will be pink enough for all of us. If you're new here and you don't know me already, Hi, my name is Emma and I make houseplanty content all over the internet, so if you want to follow along with my houseplanty journey and maybe learn something along the way, stick around, watch some more of my videos, and subscribe to my channel. If you're not new here, thanks for coming back. Let's get into it! So the first one that I'm going to talk about is this lovely right here. This is a Syngonium Strawberry Milk and it has like these really narrow Syngonium leaves. They're much more narrow than the average Syngonium, I'd say, and they come with these gorgeous pink splotches. I think these are the best pink splotches when it comes to Syngoniums. I tend to not be as big of a fan of pinky Syngoniums because typically their pinkiness kind of blends in with the green and it kind of gets like muddy looking, and that's not my personal favorite. If you like that, great, fantastic, buy them, more for you. <laughs> But I really like when the pink like just doesn't muddle in with the green and go a bit brown and just exists in this like super bright pinky form. I think it is so fun. Like half moon leaf, like how insane is that? But I really really like this plant. It has been pretty easy care for me. It hasn't gotten much bigger in the time I've had it. Though I did get it from a quite small seedling, so I guess it has grown some. <laughs> it is fairly slow growing though in my experience. Even though I have it in my Millsbow cabinet underneath the grow light, it is still taking its sweet time to push out new growth. But I don't mind that too much. I think it's fine and I like it how it is, so I'm not like jonesing for it to get bigger and bigger and bigger anytime soon. I just like having it where it is. Also, if it got too big, I wouldn't be able to have it in my cabinet. I'd have to figure something else out. It'd be a whole palava. So <laughs> I am just going to enjoy the adorable little pink leaves like this for now. There's also a couple other pink syngoniums I've had in the past. The Neon Robusta was one. And then the Milk Confetti was also pinky, which is fun. Syngoniums in general can be pretty cool. I've just kind of lost my love for them a little bit at the minute, but this is one of the ones that I'm still really here for. So it's just gonna keep living cute and pink in my cabinet. So my hands are like very shaky. <laughs> so this is a Calathea ornata. It was one of the first pinky plants that I had ever had. This, not this one specifically, my other one I think got thrips or spider mites and was just an absolute ordeal. But this one is new and improved and for the most part happy, but they are known for their super dark leaves, but with pink pinstripes on them. Look at that. I think the light might be blowing it out a little bit, but they are pink, I promise. But honestly, this is pro probably one of the easiest Calatheas I've had. They tend to be pretty easygoing compared to some of the other ones I've tried. And I've tried several at this point. But also my home is generally quite high humidity, so I think that would help massively when it comes to keeping these happy. I found that they can also tolerate a bit lower lighter conditions as well. Obviously don't give it no light, it needs light to live. But more on like the medium indirect light side is where I find that this one sits comfortably. Anything too high and it will get burnt and anything lower and it'll grow quite leggy. Though mine is a little bit leggy. It's overall a quite nice plant and I think it's happy enough in my care, hopefully. It does have some 
wrinkly leaves at the bottom and that is from a period of underwatering that it happened while I was unwell but hopefully those will be replaced come spring and we can move on to bigger and better growth. Also the backs of these leaves are like super dark purpley color which is super cool. It's just a really beautiful plant so even when it's like facing upwards like when it's going to sleep at night tucking itself in it you see these beautiful pink sides rather than the stripy sides and it's just it's just a fabulous little one and this one always scares me randomly in the day it'll like brush against a wall and I'll be like what's that so yeah just be aware if you get a uh, calathea like this they will make loads of noise so this next plant used to be more pink than it is now and I am not quite sure what's changed so this is the Hoya parasitica and this was the plant that I first saw like sun stressing on Hoyas where the variegation the little spots on it go pink like it was bright pink I will put in a picture of what it looked like it was so incredibly pink and I was like unprepared for that to occur it was just so random and cool it has since kind of lost that pinkiness a little bit unfortunately but I still think it's a beautiful plant I don't just like its first pinkiness it was just something that was a bit of a surprise and unexpected for me I wonder if I move this into the Rudsta under the brighter light if it would come out more pink again because I think that could be cool but overall I'm not like I'm not begging for it to go pink but I do think that when Hoyas go pink it is just like a bit magical so yeah sun stressing your Hoyas can turn their variegation pink pretty awesome so this next one doesn't look pink off the bat but its new growth does come in pink which is exciting it is the ficus elastica taniki so you can see it looks for the most part white and green here but if you really have a close look at that new growth given this one is like fading to white pretty quickly it does have a beautiful pink hue to it and especially like when they're brand brand new they are super duper pinky compared to the rest of the foliage and it makes for a really nice contrast and it makes it very obvious when you're getting a new leaf because they are pink but it's just a lovely little plant and for the most part pretty easy I used to have a really big one of these a long long time ago and this is actually the top cutting of that plant but I have struggled with it with pests and stuff and so this was all I was able to save I'm just glad at this point I have something that exists that looks like a tiny mini tree <laughs> in a pot and I'm hoping that one day I can grow up big and strong again but for now I'm just gonna appreciate having it full stop and I'm just gonna wait until it puts out another cute little pink leaf because I think that they're adorable I think you can also get like a ruby or Belize ficus elastica where the leaves stay the crazy pink color which is super cool I'll pop a picture up on the screen and those are super funky and they add a beautiful bit of color to your home if that's what you're into and especially if you buy a big one it could be a proper statement piece so definitely be on the lookout for those because they're pretty freaking cool this plant was also in last year's heart shaped leaves video it is the string of hearts plant specifically the variegated one because the little backs of their leaves when they're variegated go this gorgeous like purpley pinky color and it contrasts with the green and it just makes for an absolutely beautiful plant luckily most of the foliage is facing the inside of this one because I have it on top of my Ikea cabinet and so it's receiving light from inside of the cabinet so a lot of growth is facing the other way so I get to enjoy the pinky purpliness all of the time which is a bit of fun and a bit more exciting than like you might typically see with your string of hearts this one I've had for quite a while now and I got it as like a two or three strand cutting and now I've probably got about 15 strands in here just through chopping and propping I think it's probably about time for me to chop and prop again with this sort of length so I'll probably do that in the coming months 
And when I do that, imagine it being like twice as thick as this. Exciting. And that just means more beautiful pinky, purpley, variegated leaves. And they're heart shaped, so it's like even more of a Valentine's Day plant. Overall, it is a pretty easy grower. I have had the most luck with string of hearts when I literally just like set and forget them. This one's getting, like I said, some grow light from the cabinet, but not tons and tons and tons. It has lost some of its variegation in there. There are a lot of leaves that aren't variegated, but I don't mind that that much. I think it's nice when you have little bits of white and pink every now and then and the mix of like the kind of bluey silvery green color that the most of the plant is. So overall, pretty freaking cute and a really chill plant. It's so freaking chill. I think if I put it in higher light, it might go more variegated. Either that or I have just mixed non-variegated <laughs> cuttings into this, which I don't mind. I think it still looks beautiful. This next one will come as a surprise to absolutely no one. It is the Philodendron Pink Princess. And obviously it is really freaking pink. Look at that amazing half moon leaf. This was the Pride and Joy leaf of my old plant. I did chop it up. I can link that video in the clickable eye if you want to watch me chop up my pink princess. Overall, I've kind of struggled with the pink in this plant. You kind of just need to get a pink princess with really, really good genes in order for it to stay super variegated and pink like this. If you buy one that has low variegation, although a lot of people say like put it under high light or like give it lots of humidity, <laughs> give it a pole to climb. Unfortunately, if yours does not have good genes, it's not gonna put out the beautiful pink patches that you're desiring when buying the pink princess. I'm assuming that's why you bought it. I think mine has a good mix of variegation. I know this is just like cuttings in water, but it has a good mix of variegation. There are some patches here and even on the newer leaves, there are small patches of pink, which is fun. But in general, it's not got the best variegation. I would love something, maybe not quite half moony, but like a quarter of the leaves each pink. I think that would look really nice. And if it does grow like that one day, that would be amazing. I am propping these right now, as you can see, they're in some water and eventually they will go back into the mother plant, which is down there, you can't see it. Another really cool pink thing about the pink princess is that it bleeds pink. Like, if you cut it, the sap inside is a bright pink color, so when I was cutting this up, it kind of looked like a mini murder scene. But it is so cool to see, and I'm pretty sure you can use it as a natural dye. So if you're interested in dyeing things, like your clothing, <laughs> well, pink, <laughs> I don't know if it washes out or not, but be careful if you're cutting these. Do it in clothes that you don't mind getting pink, because if they get stained, they might last like that forever. <laughs> the pink princess. <laughs> this next plant is the most purple plant I have ever seen in my entire life. This is a purple passion plant and the entire plant is covered with tiny little purple hairs and you can kind of get the color better from the back of the leaf. All of the tiny hairs are this gorgeous kind of purpley magenta color and no matter like what angle you're looking at it, there will always be purple on it. And it is just such a funky little plant. I have never ever seen anything like this before. I think it is so cool. It's also super soft, like, I mean, that wasn't the softest because it's got kind of pointyish edges, but just rubbing it with your finger, it is super, super soft. All the little purple hairs existing are really cool. As you can see, I just have this one propagating in water. Ignore the peperomia that's in there with it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this one. And it's just a pretty easy going plant so far. I've been propping it in water since I've had it. I got it as a swap, oh gosh, quite a while ago now. So I haven't really grown it myself in substrate yet. I should probably pot it up at this point because it's got roots but I am procrastinating still on it. So it's okay. It's just a lovely little purple plant and it adds a lovely bit of color to 
my shelves. It's unexpected color as well. Like normally I feel like this color would jar me a little bit, especially in contrast with the green, but I do really like how it looks sitting on my shelves. Not that you can see that color, but if you could, it would look nice. <laughs> but yeah, um, the purple passion plant. Really cute, adorable little thing. I have also heard that the flowers of these ones smell terrible. So if you notice that yours is blooming, you might want to cut the flowers off because they stink. <laughs> we don't want our homes to stink. We have another Hoya on this list. I don't think it should be a surprise that the Hoya Sigillatus is here. And the joy of the Sigillatus is that instead of like their variegation going pink, the dark parts of their leaves go purple when they get sun stressed. And so you can see the leaf tips end up going this crazy purple color. Like, look at that. They still have their light variegation, but the backs of the leaves are a crazy purpley green color. And it's just uh, a bit of funkiness on the plant. I think they are so, so cool. This is a plant that I've like wanted for so, so long. And so I was finally able to get one during a swap in, I think, October time. So thanks, Wendy. <laughs> But I would really, really love to see this one grow all the way around its trellis. I should probably have put it in something different because it's a bit leany. But hopefully I can get it to grow. I think it's starting to at the top there. A tiny little bit. But it has been taking its time with it. But I just like... The, the purpley leaves, they're just so strange. They look so different to any of my other Hoyas. I think that's one of the things that I love about Hoyas so much is that all of their leaves are so different. Like some of them are like wide and round and shiny and others are long and skinny and fuzzy and some have weird veins and some have splashes and some are silver and it's just a bit of fun. And I feel like all of them are just so different. Even ones that look somewhat similar end up growing quite different. So it's, it's, it's a really fun, sort of plant to collect and I'm hoping that I, once I get this to grow I can share that love for the Sigillatus with others. So I don't know if y'all would count this as pink or orange but I'm gonna say it's a coral color. This is a philodendron ring of fire and the new leaves on this plant where they turn into like this sort of yellowy variegation later those parts come in a beautiful peachy coral color on the leaf and I totally see why it's called that it looks like a little bit of fire in there and it's just so funky typically plants with yellow variegation like this don't really do it for me they're not my favorites but I think just because this one comes in that pinky color something about it is great and it makes me really really love this plant I'm hoping that I can get this one to grow quite big. Mine is a very, very small one, but it is starting to like zigzag at the sides on these past couple leaves. So hopefully going forward, I will be able to get it to do that. And when the leaves are big and coming in in the pink color, like, oh my goodness, that is something special. They are absolutely freaking stunning and just a lovely little plant. I, I think it's a fun one and they're becoming a lot more common and widely available recently so if you can get your hands on one I definitely suggest it. It's a bit of fun. The philodendron ring of fire. Sorry if the camera angle changed slightly. I had to change the battery of my camera but we're here and this is the last plant on the list. Y'all had to expect this was coming for me because I have been obsessed with the way this plant looks lately. This is the Hoya New Guinea Ghost. And typically they just have these silvery minty green leaves, but when you sun stress them, they go this gorgeous pinky purple color on all of their leaves. And it is just so like, so strange and beautiful. And frankly, in my opinion, quite unexpected. And they're just so weird and lovely. But trying to sun stress it out and putting it under the Arcadia Jungle Dawn it actually lives right where my thumb is there. It is under so much bright light that the sun stress was bound to happen. And like, I like this plant as it is in its green form. I absolutely love it. Maybe one day I should have a second one. 
and then I could have one that stays green and then one that I sunstress, then I could have both. The best of all worlds. <laughs> That's a thing for down the line because I definitely can't afford to buy another one of these. I have one for now and it will do and I am sun stressing it. I didn't know what was gonna happen when I put this underneath the grow light and it seems like the newer leaves are going pink before the older leaves. So like this leaf here it's one of the older leaves whereas this leaf has come in since I've had it and this new leaf has like emerged since it's been underneath the grow light and that's the pinkest leaf of all. So I think it is due to the oldness of the leaf. I do believe that if I did put this back like not under grow light that it would like that the pink would fade. So that's something to experiment with as well down the line. But for now I'm just going to keep it under the grow light because I like seeing how interesting this one can grow. See how pink I can get it because that's a bit of fun and experimentation and I just like seeing how cool plants are. They're just so strange. Like who who knew that that was a thing? Like it's not harming the plant at all. It's just giving it extra sun. It's like giving it a tan. I'm just like tanning my plant. So it's fun and exciting and weird and cool and I love it. <laughs> So those are all of my pink and purple plants in my collection. I don't have tons, but I do have some, so it was really fun to share all of them with you. I'd love to hear any other pink or purple plants that you have in your collections that you think that I would like, because maybe I would like them and I can get them and I can grow my collection even further. But yeah, let me know. I'd love to find some more, especially purple ones. I feel like they're a lot less easy to find especially in foliage like I'm not that big of a flower person so purple flowers like they're fine but purple foliage that's a different story and I'm here for it let me know if you have any purple foliage plant recommendations and maybe I can get some for myself if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on other houseplanty things that you'd like me to talk about in the future. Any other sort of plant collections you'd like to see from me let me know and I can hopefully make that for you and don't forget to subscribe for more. Thank you so so much for watching and I hope you have an amazing Valentine's Day and I will see you next time. Bye!